Hi everyone, yeah, I'm Tito Teogen Haguma. Today I'm here to, to tell you that it's possible to live your life without debt. It's possible to build your house, to go and study, to buy a car without bond from the banks. It's possible if you apply the biblical principle. There's a verse in the book of Proverbs, chapter 21, verse 20, that says that in the house of a wise man, there is enough food, but a foolish one finish everything, spend everything. Where does this culture of saving, which is biblical principle, where does it come from? How do we do it in our family? And what are the benefits? That's what I'm here for to share with you. When it comes to money, we need to be in a position that God wants us to be. What does it mean? If you are a couple, be honest with your spouse about money. And also be a blessing to your local church about whatever God put in your hands. And also in your neighbors, neighborhood. Learn how to bless those in need. It doesn't mean to give away millions, but whatever you have, be a blessing to others. That's how to be in a position, in a financial position, where God wants you to be. So the first point I want to unpack, it's uh, where does this culture of saving come from in the Hagumas, in our families. I remember many years ago, I was with a friend of mine and uh, he was telling me how he's planning to buy a house and how it will be easy for him to buy a house because his uncle uh, promised him to inject some money and uh, his brother also is willing to help. And then he say, yeah, and the bank, we allow anything that we ask because, yeah, I'm working and the green ID, everything. So it's like he was opening my eyes. When I went back home, I uh, sat with my wife. I said, you know what? There is no uncle. There is no malume, Zulu, around us. Mm, our document may not allow us to get a loan or whatever. If we don't save, we are not safe. So that's how this culture of saving started in our family. My wife and I and the children when they were growing, we trained them on saving. Because if we don't save, we are not safe. There's another uh, biblical inspiration that really touched me. Genesis chapter uh, 41 from verse 2 uh, about this dreams that Joseph had. Joseph had a dream of seven good cows and then after that he saw seven sick cows that came and ate those other good healthy seven cows. So this story also inspired me because these seven cows to me is when doors are open, when I'm getting something. As a family, we are always, uh, we take precautions and say, yes, we are gaining now. These are seven good cows, healthy cows, but we don't know about tomorrow. So what to do? Let's save because days are not the same. So those are the two things that really inspired me, a friend of mine, and these dreams of Joseph. So how do we do it? How do we save money in our, in our family? It's a simple mathematics. If you know to calculate, it's very simple. But it needs discipline. Whatever comes in our hands, I'm talking about money. We start with paying or bringing tight in the house of God. 
and the tight is 10 percent so if 100 rand or 100 whatever come in our hands 10 percent is not ours it belong to god and also we continue with our calculation 65 percent of our income is what we use to meet our need as a family. 20% is for savings. We always save 20%. And then 5% is to help other people around us. There will always be people in need. You may be in need, but there are those who are worse that God is calling you to help. So 5% is for... So our living is not about how much we are earning. We always live at 65%. And sometimes we go down to 60%, even 50%. There are times that we save more for a purpose. But that's the, our discipline and principle. Easy. Let me repeat it. Any income in our family, 10% goes to God's house. 65% is what we look at, the money we have to spend. And 5% we help people around us. 20% is not ours. We save it for the future. There's a story that I want to, to share with you that really inspired me. I remember when my children were still, my big children were still in, in, in primary school. We used to go for social uh, event, and uh, there's this lady. She was like uh, sharing her story with other parents about how she doesn't have a time to do lunch for her three children who were at that school. And then she said that uh, I remember. She said that every day I give each and every one fifty rand to go and buy from the shop at school. I was shocked. I was not part of that group, but I stood and I say, please, can, can I say something? They say, please, you know, parents, when they are with children at any event, yeah, everybody's free to join any group and talk and chat. Yeah, they welcomed me. I asked the lady, can you give your children 40,000 rand every January and allow them to spend it? She said, no, I can't. It's too much. And then I told her, let's do a simple calculation, simple mathematics. So take 50 rand that you give to them, there are three, which is 150 a day. And then times 365, the days of the whole year. Guess how, how much was that money? 54,000 and some change. And the lady jumped, she screamed, she said, no. She said, from now on, they will start preparing their lunch. If they are busy, I will do it for them. I want to give them money anymore. Simple. Saving. The little you save, at the end of the year, you can do a lot. So saving is, is a wise thing to do. As we, 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 we saw it in Proverbs chapter 21, uh, verse 20. When you save, you are wise. There's a wisdom in saving. And also saving helps uh, to have funds. Fund for to invest in the future. So saving helped us to live the width and the deep of our life, not just the length. Saving is putting money aside for a purpose. When we save, we enjoy the width of our life and the deep of our life. Saving also helped us to enjoy the debt-free purchases. There is a culture of opening an account with everything in everything. you buying clothes that you will pay in six months. You buy shoes, you pay in six months. Everything is like you live your future in the present. It's a problem. Imagine even food. Imagine eating next year food today. So saving helped us to use cash and pay, that's all. And enjoy today and we're still enjoying tomorrow. 
But we're struggling, many people are struggling today to pay what they're supposed to be eating next week, next year. But they spend it this year. So saving helped us to live that free life. All the cars that we, we, we bought in, in my family, we bought them cash. The school, the university I went to, it was cash through savings. My wife too, our children too, through savings. We built a big house with zero loan through savings. We don't owe any bank. I remember when I was uh, building the house, there was a time there was a shortage of money. I tried all these shops where they sell materials. They were asking me, show us your history on, you know, where else you have account? I, I say nothing, I use cash. They say, no, we can't allow you because we don't trust you. So I went back to my savings. I saved, I saved, and then I continued building. It's a huge house. Saving also help us to grab opportunities that come once. We call them seasonal uh, opportunities. I remember a, a neighbor of mine who was moving to another province. He was selling his car, 7,000 rand. He asked our neighbors, no one had that money. And guess what? I bought it. I had cash in my house. And, uh, and all these neighbors of mine, they earned more than us, but they had no money because they were still paying the money that they spend for, <laughs> for, for the future. So saving helped us all a lot to grab opportunities. Saving also helped us to, to develop a good cultures of saving among our children. My daughter, the firstborn, the second, uh, my son, yeah, they, this last December they were working somewhere yeah during holidays they made a lot of money and uh, because they grew up in this culture of saving when i told them that it's december now it's time to enjoy to say no daddy we can't we need to save this money so they save all the money and now they are investing the money they started they started small microfinance loan where they give people money and the people pay with interest so it's a good culture that we are leaving behind. Lastly, saving helped us to set a good example to different people in our community, in our church, in our neighbors, at our workplace, where a lot of families will come to us for, for guidance, for advice. And we do really ad ad advise a lot of families on finances. As a conclusion, I, I want to to tell you that saving is possible even if you are earning 50 rand a month. Because if you can't save with 100 rand you earn a month, you won't save when you are earning 1,000, 10,000, 100,000. You need to start with the little. Because if you can't manage, or if you can't be a good steward to the little you have, if you have enough, you won't be. Thank you.